How you doing today, Jonathan? I'm, I'm doing all right. Pastor, <laughs> doing all right. I'm do good, good. So, Jonathan, he's uh, 27 years old, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, been a member of Concord for a few years, and uh, uh, he's been on fire since he's been here. He's involved in our AV ministry, our youth ministry, and uh, the men's ministry as well. Am I missing any ministries? Uh, no, sir. You got it all. Got okay. It all. So, Jonathan, tell us about uh, your life growing up. Did you grow up in a church? I was, well, my father was a pastor, and so, yeah, we can say I grew up in the church uh, at a young age, but um, as I began to get a little older, and like right before I went off to college, then I somewhat veered off the path. I, I veered off the path. Okay. So. <laughs> Thanks, John. I'm like, that's not what you told me when we talked before. <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> yeah, you went, yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit uh, about that experience, particularly uh, 2013, 2014, that kind of veering off the path, and then we'll get to how God got you back on that path. Um, well, at that time, I was, I was in, out in college in East Texas at the University of Texas at Tyler, and, and I was just living, <laughs> and I was just living really reckless, honestly, uh, just, just living selfishly, uh, and just honestly just, just giving into my desires and uh, because at that time, I was just all about finding the party. I was all about finding the girls, getting the numbers, you know, and I, re and I really wasn't too focused about, about getting in the church. And, you know, I, I knew God, but I didn't have a relationship with God mm -hmm. at, at all at that time. So at what point, Jonathan, did you recommit your life to Christ and to start following him wholeheartedly? Uh, the time that would, that would really pinpoint it would be when I actually, after I graduated, then I, then I was around the city trying to find a church, and, and then I actually got plugged in here at Concord, and then I got baptized here uh, last year, uh, and then... Amen. Uh, thank you. And then uh, following that, then I talked to you not, not too uh, long after that, then you got me plugged in the youth ministry. Then I got to work with uh, the, the summer camp. Uh, Pastor Lara connected me there. Uh, and then from there, I mean, it was, it, everything just, just started going full speed ahead there, honestly. Mm -hmm. So everything started going full speed ahead. Talk to us about when things were a little rocky just before that. I know before you shared about uh, the, how the No Complaint campaign came about. Uh, tell us how we can find out more about No Complaint campaign and, and what that is and how it came about. Okay. So... Uh, after I graduated college and I came back out here, I was working at uh, North Park Mall at True Religion. And uh, then at that time, uh, I, I, I was hanging out with my, my coworkers. And then every time after we got off work, we would go hit up happy hour. And then it, it, was, it was just drinks, drinks, drinks. And, uh, and, and then actually go, going into the, the no complaint campaign though, then uh, my boss came to me one day and she was like, dude, like, what's up? Like, why are you always, why do you always have an attitude like, what's the deal? Because you have one of the easiest jobs ever. You're selling jeans. Why, like, why are you mad? <laughs> and then at that time, I was like, I was somewhat burnt out from, from working at that store. And then uh, she, she really challenged me because I, I told her, I was like, I don't complain. I'm, I'm the most positive person here. I have the best numbers. You know, I'm selling, I'm selling the product. Like, you're crazy. So I asked a couple of friends at the store, and then they, they agreed with her, of course. So, uh, and then I went home, did a little bit of self-reflection, and then I began to realize, though, that, that I actually did have an impact at my job because I was there for a little bit longer than some of the other people. And then uh, that people actually looked up to me a little bit. And then at, at that time, I had to really take some time and do some self-reflection. And I, God really began to show me like how good I really do have it because I, I didn't want for anything I didn't, I, there wasn't anything I didn't need. If I did, I could have asked my mom or my dad. They would have helped me out. Uh, and then, like, dur during that time period, God just helped me to become really grateful for everything that I had, the job opportunity that I had, and just even friends. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's really how the No Complaint campaign really came about. Mm -hmm. Man, I think it's amazing how God will put people in our lives to show us things about ourselves that we can't see. And I love the fact that you were so willing to go home and reflect after people had told you, hey, man, you're this way, and this is how it's coming across. And uh, you didn't see it at first, but you reflected and you saw it. And so I think that's something for all of us. Uh, if people keep saying the same thing, 
uh, then there might be some truth to that. And so uh, I praise God for uh, how the Lord helped you overcome anger. Now, whatever happened with that job at True Religion? Tell me about your transition from that job and the whole story around that. Um, actually, at, at True Religion, I, I was really pretty much burnt out there. I, I think that was a part of the reason why my attitude. And then I realized that, that I could be doing so much more. I felt that I wasn't really... Uh, living in my purpose, we even can say, because I was like, my, my boss was right, I was selling jeans, the job was cool, but that's all I felt like I was doing. I didn't feel like I was really changing lives or anything like that. So following that, I, I ended up quitting True Religion, uh, and then I actually applied for graduate school. So, so now I'm currently uh, enrolled at SMU studying counseling uh, in graduate school. Wow. Wow. Amen. And so, real quick, before we transition, Jonathan, I know that you're in grad school, you, you're involved at church heavily. Um, you're seeking a wife. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and the Lord is really doing some amazing things in your life. And you shared with me that you want to you wanna plat the Lord to give you a platform to speak to youth more. Um, but you also shared that you had several jobs. And some of those jobs you were fired from. And so I just want, I want, I want the people to know <clears throat> about the depth of your depravity, where the Lord, how far he had to reach down. Because some people are in a similar place right now, and, and they need to know no matter where you were, that God can get down there where you are. And this might be a sign to some people tonight. God brought you here tonight so that he could tell you that, hey, you're not too low for me to come down and get you. So tell us about what happened there. Thank you for helping me out, Pastor Ruff. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, during, during that time, I worked at, uh, well, I worked at a grocery store in, in Atlanta, got bored, started hooking friends up with groceries. <laughs> got caught, got fired. Uh, then I, then I, <laughs> then, then following that, then I, I, I came out, I came to, to Tyler, Tyler, Texas. I was at finish line and was hooking friends up. <laughs> <laughs> then I got fired. I was at Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he let us guess. What was he doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and coming up at the same time, tell them how you came up. Yeah, they, they came in. They, 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 they t jumping on me. But, uh, and then I was at Red Lobster. I was actually uh, involved in something. Uh, it was actually re really uh, credit card fraud. Hmm. And, uh, I mean, I, like, it was just out of pure greed that I was just doing all these things. It was pure greed and got fired. But, I mean, at the end of the day, though, then, like, by, I mean, by the grace of God, I've, I've never been arrested, never been in jail. Like, and I mean, God like truly covered me. And I mean, so now I'm here and now I'm, now I'm plugged in and, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm no longer hooking anybody up. <laughs> uh, Jonathan and I, we were out eating the other day and uh, when he told me about his thieving, um, <laughs> I checked for my wallet. I kept checking. <laughs> So I think he's straight. He's no longer in that business. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan, what, um, what, what scripture or song has gotten you through 2015? Surely there have been some trying times and, and you've had to lean on the Lord. Uh, what scripture or song? Uh, the scripture that, that would really have got me through would be Psalms 51, uh, verse 12 and 13. And it reads... Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Hmm. Wow. Why was that so significant? Why was that so significant, that uh, passage? I mean, I think that scripture right there just helps me. That, that scripture in the whole Psalms 51, I actually been reading that before I go to bed at night. And then it, it just helps me clear my mind and, you know, just knowing that I'm broken, knowing that I'm far from perfect, knowing that I still mess up. And, I mean, it just helps me to humble myself before God and just ask for forgiveness. Mm. 
and then ask him to be able to take my story, be able to take me as I am and be able to use me to continue to further the kingdom and continue to bring people wow. towards him. Wow, so. wow. Amen. Jonathan, final question. What are you looking forward to God doing in your life next in 2016? In 2016, just as you stated earlier, I'm looking to do speaking engagements to reach out to the youth. I'm getting ready to publish my first book in January 2016. Wow. Thank you, thank you. What's the title? Uh, the title of the book is actually Process. Okay. That's, that's, wow. that's the title of it. Yeah. And I mean, it, it really gives some, some application towards like the youth as far as professionalism, as far as being respectful, as far as forgiveness. And like there, there's 14 key steps in there really that I mean, some of us may not have had access to that type of information. So I put it together and I was like, these are things that have been useful to me, that's been really helpful to me. And also one of them is, uh, I mean, a big part is accountability. And like I know we talked about the other day, uh, how like I'm just thankful for Concord because there's some people here that keep me accountable and, uh, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just really thankful for that as well. Very good, very good. Well, thank you for sharing, Jonathan. Now your actual entire testimony or at least a good portion of it is in written form out there somewhere on the internet. Where can the people find that if they want to know the juicy details? Uh, <laughs> if, if the people would like to see my full testimony, well, you can just ask me if you see me. And, and you can go on Instagram.com. Well, no complaint campaign. Go on Instagram and type no complaint campaign, all one word. And then you, you'll see it if you scroll down far, because I posted it a little while ago. Okay. But you'll, you'll see it if you scroll down. And then, or you can ask me and I can get it to you. Okay. So. Let's praise God for this testimony of Brother Jonathan.